Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to First United Methodist Church. To those of you who are here with us in person and to all of you who are joining us online. Welcome to the house of God. Welcome to First United Methodist Church of Taylor. My name is Stella Fino and I am privileged to be the pastor here. If you will now please rise and join us in our call to worship. Please respond in bold. Give thanks to God and call on God's name. Sing to God. Sing praises to God. Make known God's deeds among the people. Sing to God. Sing praises to God. Seek God's presence and God's strength. Sing to God. Sing praises to God. Let us worship our God, for God is faithful. Please join me in the opening prayer. Our gracious and ever-loving God, we come in the midst of summer looking for refreshment. We rest in the knowledge of the wonderful works you have done for us, and of the deep and abiding love you have for us and for all God's people. Search our hearts, fill our souls with the Holy Spirit, who whispers to our soul that all will be well if we trust in you. Shine your light before us that we may see our path to you and to your kingdom on earth. Amen. going to different areas, 
and healing people and talking to them about God, and they were tired. They needed rest. And in this verse, Jesus told them, let's go and have a rest. So Jesus is telling us, you know, okay, we all have important work to do, but sometimes we need a rest. We need to pack our bags, and we need to take a vacation, and that's okay, right? But what do we take with us when we go on vacation? We have to pack clothes, we have to pack our sunglasses, our sunblock, depending on where we're going. If we're going camping, we've got to pack a tent. But what is the most important thing we need to put in our bags with us? Our Bible and Jesus. We take Jesus with us everywhere we go. Because guess what? Even if we don't remember to take him, he's coming with us anyway. <laughs> All right. Let's say a prayer. Dear God, thank you for opportunities to rest. Thank you for always being with us no matter where we go. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you. I hope everyone gets to take some sort of vacation this summer. And please rise for the next hymn. Forgive us when we forget. How easy it is for us to focus only on our current circumstances and forget what you have done for us in the past. Help us to change our ways and to remember that change comes in the smallest of ways in our hearts, in our spirits, and in our actions. We offer our prayers for our friends, our family, our community, and country who are in need of healing and forgiveness. We pray for everyone who are grieving this morning. Roy Rogers family, Leroy Ulbricht's family, and Tyler Cobb's family. May you continue to pour out your love upon these precious families and remind them of your presence. We pray, God, for the continued civil unrest happening around this country and around the world. We pray for all families on the coast dealing with the storm. We pray for every essential worker on the front line. We pray for all people suffering, especially those who are, who are already suffering before this pandemic. And we're grateful, God, to have choices, choice to wear a mask, choice to wash our hands, and a choice to stay home. 
where millions around the world do not have access to masks, never had access to clean water, and those without a home. We pray this morning, God, for all people. And this we pray in Jesus' name, who taught his disciples to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Gifted with the grace of God and clothed with power from on high, let us now offer ourselves to the building of God's kingdom. God of grace and mercy, we offer our gifts to you this day, knowing that it, knowing that it is your love and presence that have sustained us through all our difficult days. We know there have been days when fear and anxiety have gotten the better of us, and we have needed the reminder Paul gave in the epistle to the Romans. If God is with us, is who is against us. Help us to live as Christ calls us, to share what we have and show love and compassion as Christ taught us. We boldly pray in the name of Jesus our Savior and Redeemer. Amen. We confess that we have allowed a host of worries and frustrations to crowd out your word for us. As you give us peace in your transforming love, also forgive all those times when we have been less than faithful disciples. Gently visit us again with your healing powers. Restore our hope and courage and joy for all the times ahead. We ask this in the name of the Master Healer, Jesus Christ. Amen. Here is some wonderful news. While we were worrying and fretting, fretting, God has been at work in our lives, offering healing and peace. Receive these gifts in the name and love of the Lord our God. Amen. Our scripture lesson today comes from Psalm 105, as read in the New International Version. Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Who can proclaim the mighty acts of the Lord? Or fully declare his praise. Blessed are those who act justly, who always do what is right. 
Remember me, Lord, when you show favor to your people. Come to my aid when you save me, that I may enjoy the prosperity of your chosen ones, that I may share in the joy of your nation, and join your inheritance in giving praise. We have sinned, even as our ancestors did. We have done wrong and acted wickedly. When our ancestors were in Egypt, they gave no thought to your miracles. They did not remember your many kindnesses, and they rebelled by the sea, the Red Sea. Yet he saved them for his name's sake, to make his mighty power known. He rebuked the Red Sea, and it dried up. He led them through the depths as though a desert, as through a desert. He saved them from the land, hand of the foe. From the hand of the enemy, he redeemed them. The waters covered their adversaries. Not one of them survived. Then they believed his promises and sang his praise. But they soon forgot what he had done and did not wait for his plan to unfold. In the desert, they gave into their craving. In the wilderness, they put God to the test. So he gave them what they asked for, but sent a wasting disease among them. In the camp, they grew envious of Moses and of Aaron, who was consecrated to the Lord. The earth opened up and swallowed Dathan. They buried the company of Abram. Fire blazed among their followers. A flame consumed the wicked. At Horeb, they made a calf and worshipped an idol cast from metal. They exchanged their glorious God for an image of a bull which eats grass. They forgot the God who saved them, who had done great things in Egypt, miracles in the land of Ham, and awesome deeds by the Red Sea. So he said he would destroy them, had not Moses, his chosen one, stood in the breach before him to keep his wrath from destroying them. Then they despised the pleasant land. They did not believe his promise. They grumbled in their tents and did not obey the Lord. So he swore to them with, up, with uplifted hand that he would make them fall in the wilderness, make their descendants fall among the nations, and scatter them throughout the lands. They yoked themselves to the Baal of Peor, and ate sacrifices offered to lifeless gods. They aroused the Lord's anger by their wicked deeds, and a plague broke out among them. But Phineas stood up and intervened, and the plague was checked. This was credited to him as righteousness for endless generations to come. By the waters of Meribah they angered the Lord, and trouble came to Moses because of them. For they rebelled against the Spirit of God, and rash words came from Moses' lips. They did not destroy the peoples, as the Lord had commanded them, but they mingled with the nations and adopted their customs. They worshipped their idols, which became a snare to them. They sacrificed their sons and their daughters to false gods. They shed innocent blood, the blood of their sons and daughters, whom they sacrificed to the idols of Canaan, and the land was desecrated by their blood. They defiled themselves by what they did, by their deeds they prostituted themselves. Therefore the Lord was angry with his people, and abhorred his inheritance. He gave them into the hands of the nations, and their foes ruled over them. Their enemies oppressed them, and subjected them to their power. Many times he delivered them, but they were bent on rebellion. And they wasted away in their sin. But he took note from their distress, when he heard their cry. For their sake he remembered his covenant, and out of his great love he relented. He calls all who held them captive to show them mercy. Save us, Lord our God, and gather us from the nations, that we may give thanks to your holy name and glory in your praise. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Let all the people say, Amen. Praise the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You're thinking that passage was long. Just wait till you hear my sermon. <laughs> Let us go to God in prayer. Gracious God, speak to us this morning at your word of truth, love, and peace. Remind us once more that you have never left us and you never will. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, at some point in our life, we usually make promises, either to other people or to groups, to ourselves, and sometimes even to God. 
And as life moves on and life gets messy, life gets in the way. And sometimes we're not able to keep those promises. And sometimes circumstances of life gets in a way that forces us to break those promises or other people break their promises to us. Just look at the number or the percentages of marriages that end up in divorces, over 50%. And the percentages gets higher with remarriages. Second marriages, I understand, is close to 70%. Third marriages, yes, there are some people who keep trying, are close to 80 or we can just look at the number of broken promises from our politicians or we can just look at churches and how they break up or how we break up not even their faith or our faith can keep us together or people leaving churches either for another church or just out there in this big bad world. Culturally, this is a problem. We're not keeping our commitments and we're not keeping our promises. We're only as committed as long as the thermostat is set on comfortable. And that comfortable level on the thermostat changes from day to day. We are consumers of everything and anything that moves or that moves us. We're consumers of partners, of people, of schools, of churches, and even gods. Don't like the songs or messages being sung or preached at a particular church? Just go down at the road to find yourself another one. I'm sure their pastor or their ushers are always more nicer at the next church. We are in the consumer beast and everything revolves around us. If it's not done my way, see ya. Or as they say, bye Felicia. We are people filled and instigators of broken promises. And the psalmist for us this morning reminds us that God's promises is nothing like ours at all. It remains the same. It will not change. And we can trust and remember God's promises to us. When our own promises fails us, God's promises remain and stand firm. It was first made to the Jews and then to the Gentiles. The Gentiles, which includes you and I. And God's promises is salvation to save us from ourselves. And to remember that there will always be sunny days after the storm. And we need to remember this. And we need to give thanks to God and call on God's name. And this is what the psalmist reminds us this morning. That we need to tell everybody on just how good God has been to us. We need to sing praises and we need to tell of the wonders of God. We need to be able to rejoice and to give all the glory to God. We need to be seeking God's presence and strength in all times. Remember what God has done. Remember the miracles of God, but remember also the judgments of God. Remember the goodness of God, but remember the promises of God. Remember and do not forget it. 
Remember God's faithfulness to Israel and remember God's faithfulness to you and I. The psalmist was speaking to the Israelites who was probably going through a faith crisis. They had been in exile and they lost everything. And they're wondering, where is God in the midst of our loss? Where is God in the midst of our troubles? They're wondering, where is God? And will God forget us forever? Did God forget about the covenant that God had made with our ancestors? Are we not included in that covenant? And the psalmist reminds them by giving them a brief history lesson in just a few verses in the psalm that we have for us this morning. And you want to remember that the psalms were recited and sung from memory in public. And so the psalmist retells the people's story, retells the people's story so they do not forget where they had come. And for them not to forget on the amazing and incredible mercy that God had offered their people. God had always been faithful. God's promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob applies to them as well. From one generation to the next, God provided for them while they were in Egypt. And although they were oppressed for a long time, God was always working behind the scene. God was working on a way out for them. They wanted a leader. God provided them Moses and Aaron. God brought them out of Egypt, split the Red Sea, so they can walk safely across to the other side. God journeyed with them in the desert. They wanted food, God provided quail. They wanted water, God provided water from a rock. They wanted bread, God provided them manna. They wanted to settle in their own land, God provided them and led them to the promised land. God was faithful and always made a way. They may have been experiencing a setback, but God was still at work. I know that you are probably all thinking, am I really going to preach on all of those verses from Psalm 105? There's 45 verses. And this is why, because we all need a lesson in history on just how good our God has been and is and will be. We all need to know the story. We all need to be reminded of what God has done, of what God is doing, and what God will continue to do. And to also remind ourselves that when we go through a faith crisis like the Israelites did, that we need to remember the promises of God. That although we may be experiencing a setback in life at times, and we are wondering where is God in the midst of our grief? Where is God in the midst of our loss? God is present. We can be reminded that God is always at work behind the scene, even when we cannot see God. Even when we forget about God and about God's promises, God still remembers and God will provide. We all get our share of loss and grief. We all get our shares of troubles and frustrations and ugliness, and doubt, despair, depression, faithlessness. But as we are all going through it, remember the promises of God. 
that will bring us to the other side. We're going to have our shares of life's problems, but God will bring us through. We're going to have our share of pain in this life, but God will provide a way for us to be able to deal with life's pain. We are going to have our shares of storm in this life, but God provides a way so that we can remain calm in the midst of a storm. If you were here yesterday, here in Taylor, you will remember or felt the rainfall yesterday. I was so excited that it rained yesterday. I started jumping up and down and my dogs thought that I was crazy. <laughs> but I thought it was going to rain for a while. But the rain, as if you remember, it only lasted but a few minutes. Maybe 10 minutes, if that. And then I got disappointed after that and I thought, you know, instead of my getting disappointed, of course I wanted more rain. Of course the people here in Central Texas wanted more rain. But we can be grateful for the little bit of rain that we received yesterday. We can still be grateful for the little bit of blessings that we receive each and every day. Yes, we can always wish for more. We can always hope for more. We can always pray for more. But we can also be thankful and be grateful for the blessing that is with us each and every day. It's the small blessings like the rain yesterday that we can all give thanks to God for. And usually after a rainfall, you know there comes a rainbow. And usually if I'm out and about driving and if I see a rainbow, I pull over and I just enjoy the rainbow. Not just for the rainbow, but it also reminds me about the promises of God that after a rainfall, that after a storm, there will be sunny days, there will be sunshine after the storm. And that is what the rainbow reminds me of. You and I are here today standing on the promises of God. The only promises that will live on and will not be broken. And the psalmist reminds us that it is our duty and it is our privilege and should be our joy to tell others of just how good God has been to us. To tell others of uh, the wonderful and amazing things that God has done for us and through us. To remind others that there is nowhere here on earth that they can escape from the love of God. We are all standing on the promises of God today. Remember that, church. Remember that as we all go through trials and tribulations in life. Remember the faithfulness of God. Remember the promises of God. If you're now, please rise and join us in singing, standing on the promises of God. Amen. <laughs>
Amen. Amen.